Okay, now you are you are free to type in random facts. Press your enters. Okay, I don't hear a lot of clicking right now. Uh, so I assume that there are some answers uh, about random facts and I will let TAs deal with them. And now I will actually go and tell something about Vlasov and Boltzmann equations. Uh, so <laughs> this is immediately the Vlasov equation. It looks like a big equation. If you look at it, it is an equation for the variable f, which is a distribution function. The distribution function on the bottom of the slide, it is easy to think about it as the number of particles per unit of phase space volume. And the whole Vlasov equation, although it looks a little bit complicated and long, uh, it is just about conserving the number of particles and phase space volume. So essentially, it is writing that d distribution function to d time equals zero. Uh, and it assumes that there are no collisions. You just have particles interacting via potentials. So for particles interacting via potential, you conserve the number of particles uh, and you conserve the phase space volume. This is little bit clever. So Vlaso equation is a clever way to write this down. And if you think of the analytical structure of this equation, this is um, this distribution function is depending on time, on coordinates, and on momentum. And well, it is an equation on seven dimensional function. And it has a self consistent potential in it. So uh, the potential is integral of pairwise potential and the distribution function itself. This is how you understand the Vlasov equation. And you can see that there is a zero on the right side of the equation. It means that there are no collisions. Then a harder modification of Vlasov equation is Boltzmann equation. The left-hand side is exactly the same, but the right-hand side is corresponding to the collisions. So I'm, what I'm doing here is all non-relativistic just to keep it slightly simpler. Um, so now uh, on the left-hand side, you see the same thing that was in the Vlasov equation, df, the distribution function to d time. And in Vlasov equation, it was zero. And in Boltzmann equation, it is going to be equal to something called collision integral. And collision integral is number of particles in phase space that you gain minus number of particles in the phase space that you lose. You both gain and lose due to collisions. Uh, I like to think about Boltzmann equation as a pure bookkeeping. You think of volume in, in the phase space as some kind of cube or just illustrate it in your mind as some kind of volume. And then by collisions, particles can escape from this volume to some other volumes and particles can enter to this volume from some other volumes. So d to dt of number of particles is number of collisions that bring particles to the volume minus number of collisions that bring particles out of the volume. Now the first equation is, is very clear. It is just a bookkeeping of number of particles in the phase space volume. But then when you really expand it, when you substitute that number of particles as distribution function times phase space volume, then you rewrite the left-hand side as the Vlasov equation. And then you rewrite the right-hand side as this big collision integral on the bottom. And then you get the actual Boltzmann equation for one particle species. And in its essence, Boltzmann equation is just bookkeeping particles in the phase space. But then if, if you look at its structure, it's a big integral differential equation on the distribution function. So the unknown is this distribution function f and how it changes with time. Uh, and it is seven dimensional. So it has time, 
three coordinates and three momentum in it. So it is already a complicated equation, integral differential seven dimensional equation. Uh, but what we know about it, it has some really nice properties. Um, okay, with this equation, I forgot to mention a few assumptions that you assume that particles entering every collision are uncorrelated. And in this case of Boltzmann equation, you just have two to two collisions. And you are also assuming that there is a separation between potentials acting on, on some longer range and between short range interactions which go into the collisions. And after these assumptions, you have this Boltzmann equation. Why it is good? It has some nice properties. The first property is called H theorem. It means it is a theorem, you have to prove it. It means that entropy, if you calculate entropy within this equation, entropy is always growing or staying constant. Uh, and it's happening regardless of the cross sections of collisions that you put in. This is a beautiful property because it means that uh, whatever gas with whatever cross sections you have, it's going to thermalize. And the corresponding equilibrium distribution function is going to be like this. This is also part of the derivation of the H theorem. Uh, now, the, my, my Boltzmann equation was non-relativistic on the previous slide, but here I'm already given the, the equilibrium distribution for the relativistic Boltzmann equation. And now, if you integrate this distribution function with momentum and with energy, uh, then what follows, follows from it is the idea of hydrodynamics. So if you take Boltzmann equation assume local equilibrium, so assume that it reached maximum entropy locally everywhere, uh, and uh, integrate, then you will have hydrodynamic equations. Uh, what, what's important and what I wanted to show, on the top there are regions of applicability for hydro and Boltzmann equations. There are regions where Boltzmann is applicable and hydro is not applicable. There, are, there is a region where both Boltzmann and hydro are applicable. And there is a region where only hydro is applicable, but Boltzmann is not. And you can differentiate them by, by Knudsen number. Uh, so if the mean free path is comparable to the system size, uh, then hydro is not applicable. And for Boltzmann, uh, then, then you judge by microscopic scale, the mean free path has to be larger than, uh, than the Compton wavelength. So what, what's important here, you have to remember that you can derive hydrodynamic equations from Boltzmann equations, but the regions of applicability of hydro and Boltzmann are not exactly the same. Uh, in practice, we don't just have one particle species. Before it was just one particle species. Uh, what we have is a lot of species of hadrons, like pions, ros, kaons, all these fancy A's and phi's, nucleons, deltas, and stars, uh, and it's more than 100 species, even if you don't account for charges or for isospin. So you have a lot of coupled equations. The left-hand part is the Vlasov part, and D distribution function 2D time, and the right-hand part is a big collision integral. And now in collision integral, the reactions are not only uh, two to two elastic collisions, but there are also inelastic collisions. So these collision integrals become so big that it doesn't even make sense to write them. Uh, how to solve this connected system of equations? A seven dimensional system, uh, uh, seven dimensional functions, distribution functions, and it's system of more than 100 equations. And probably the only way to solve it in a reasonable way is the Monte Carlo approach, which means that instead of solving equations like the differential equations on some grid, you don't solve them on the grid. Uh, you assume that you have, uh, that your distribution is a set of delta functions. So you, you essentially sample uh, some particles with their coordinates and momenta. This is what delta functions mean and with particular masses. But instead of one particle, you sample many of what is called test particles. This part, test particles don't necessarily represent physical particles. They represent distribution function. And then you substitute this distribution function in collision integrals. Uh, and in simulation, it means that you are actually simulating the collisions. So in a way, you are computing these collision integrals 
but you are computing them in, the, in a Monte Carlo approach, which means that you are dealing with actual particles in your simulations that can collide uh, and decay. And when I'm saying actual particles, I mean test particles. Uh, this is still a representation of the distribution function. Now, uh, okay, uh, there are different types of transport models. And two most prominent types are called QMD and BUU. Uh, I'm not asking for any random facts now. I just want you to, to press yes and no uh, for if you have heard the terms QMD and BUU before. How's it going? Is anybody pressing yes and no? Yeah, we have 15 yeses and 54 noes. So I think that you can assume no. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm happy that some people 